little Kevin here and uh, Saint, this golden doodle. They haven't been getting along so well. So trying to see how deep it goes. And a lot of it, I think, is just arousal and that fine line between arousal, fight, you know, play and fighting. And so just doing some practice around each other to do some basic impulse control. I, they're not gunning for each other. There's not like an aggression between them. Saint even got on the bed with Kevin at one point, just voluntarily. So there's not like a lot of animosity between them. So just a little pressure on, pressure off. Did it for about 10 minutes until we got into a good groove. And what I mean by good groove until I did these boring walks, right? And when I turn, Kevin turns with me without needing leash. There's a little bit more leash right there, but it was minor. And then when we got into a groove, then I layered this on. And this was really the most telling moment. Kevin can actually be quite sensitive, at least with, with me. <laughs> they, dogs are never as sensitive with their owners. But um, I really wanted to set up these scenarios with the dogs and then have the owner come back and do it where they can pet another dog and Kevin, the bulldog, boom, block. Can't care about it right there. Petting multiple dogs creates competition and it can create uh, protectiveness, ownership issues, things like that, leading to quickly escalating fighting. And Kevin is a hardcore player anyway. And so those things kind of just build up. And so it's so important for Kevin to be able to watch me pet other dogs, watch me move around, give attention to other things, other people, um, and not care about it. But the big thing is that block right there because I had a plan and you have to have a plan. I'm gonna put my dog right here where I can put myself in the middle, go and pet the other dog, and then move into my dog when I know they're gonna get up because I know my dog and I know they're probably gonna get up, right? So that's, that's really my point is that uh, have a plan. And I think when the owner was here, uh, nothing was triggering Kevin. So we had them really, really close together. She couldn't really step in the middle of them, uh, effectively. And so she used the leash. It was a really good instinct for her to have, but I don't think she planned it. Um, it was a great instinct, but in your head, have a plan. And that's really what I'm saying. And, and then do it over and over again. Don't just do it once block your dog, tell them, no, and then move on and you're done. You are not done. Do it three to five more times successfully where you don't have to tell your dog no. That is what solidifies what you're trying to teach them to do in place of the bad behavior. So that's why we just do this over and over again. Saint loved his job, <laughs> as you could tell. <laughs> now, I did have them placed together a little bit. Uh, like I said, Saint hopped up there earlier um, really comfortable with it. That's why I didn't mind it. But I could tell Kevin was a little, a little like, mm, are you, are you sure? Are you sure? And I do think that Kevin is the sensitive one in this scenario and that there was a tiny bit of just, mm, I'm not, if, if I'm not in charge is like Kevin's brain. If I'm not in control of the situation, I don't totally know how to act or what to do. That's kind of the vibe I was getting from Kevin. And so a little bit heavy leadership, heavy instruction, heavy guidance. He'll get used to following people more and kind of trust, you know, what, what I'm asking him to do a little bit, a little bit faster. But it's, I don't think Kevin had any issues with Saint. I think there's just this element of if control is taken away from a dog who's used to being in control and they've had a few squabbles, there's a bit of, uh, you know, insecurity there when he, when he's not in control around Saint anymore. And so that's really what I saw. And that'll just take, that'll just take practice. The other really useful part of this is having your dog stay in a down while you're around other dogs or people or whatever is triggering your dog's excitement for them to get up and then maybe act in a way, you know, that's inappropriate. And so me working Saint around Kevin is just as crucial as the reverse. It really is being able to have my dog stay in place. Now you can always back tie them because I, I didn't because Kevin was doing so well, but I wouldn't want him to get up and get all the way to me before I reset him. So if he's back tied, I can very easily uh, just step in and fix that scenario without it, you know, invading Saint's space in case Saint didn't want it. But this is all really good. I was really happy to see, 
you know, how they can be together and that there doesn't seem to be a lot of animosity between them. Um, in the beginning, Saint was growling a bit and really concerned if he couldn't see Kevin. And that's because Kevin has been really pushy with him before and started fights. And so there's, I'm not saying there's nothing to work through here, but as you can see with just how they feel around each other when they're calm, there's a lot to build up to. So that kind of rem uh, brings me to my next point and I'll, I'll try to get to it quickly. And that is, they don't need to, and that is, they don't need to interact right now. They need to learn how to exist around each other and not care about each other. And that, you know, that goes for Saint too. But if Kevin's calm, I don't think Saint does care about him. But they need to just learn how to follow their handlers, follow their people first. Then when they're calm and this is easy for them, this is the new normal when they're challenged and someone walks in the house and things like that, that this is so much, just so much easier for them. Then they could start to have interactions together but only after they're calm so they would have to be like this before I would release them um, never excited that's that's so important never excited but uh, but this is how you're able to influence dogs decisions and and prevent fights his first is existence and then focusing on the handler caring more about what the handler thinks of you than he, than each other you know that builds trust and, and all kinds and confidence and things like that if they feel like a human is in control. And uh, and here I'm just trying to see what happens. They're, they're doing so good. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to see what happens. So I don't really like to use squeaky toys unless I'm trying to build drive um, or create a challenge because a, a toy is to, you know, is like an animal, basically a, a critter. And so we only use them really to, to train for distraction work or if we need to build drive in a dog that doesn't want to play. So the vast majority of time I kept it very easy on Kevin. And then a few times I had Saint actually run in front of Kevin. And my plan, because you always have to have a plan, was just to be able to grab the leash. It may not look like it here, but I could easily reach out and grab it where I was positioned. And so we just worked on that for a while. And they, they did great. Kevin, again, that one correction, and that's pretty much all he needed. And he was like, okay, this is my role. I, I don't get to care. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's what, what matters. That's what's important is the dog knowing when they can and can't interact. So like right there, just moving into him, um, just that lean in, he reset himself. He's really good with, with, with body language. Right here, Kevin basically says, is that clap for me? And so starts to get up and I just move into him with spatial pressure oh i didn't even move my upper body at all usually i would move my upper body forward oh there it goes there it goes so that's what he listens to my upper body moving forward that's spatial pressure that's you know why you do all the work you do with body language so you have a dog that is sensitive to spatial pressure now that can't happen if they live in your lap 24 7 and invade your space all the time and so you have to kind of keep that in mind is that they won't be sensitive to spatial pressure if that's kind of the relationship but you can work on it you can tweak that and change that here i just wanted to see how much the demeanor changed you know, is Saint a really pushy guy? You know, how does Kevin act? Kevin's really comfortable with my German Shepherd Dakota. And so I thought it would be maybe seeing Kevin get all pushy with Dakota might trigger Saint to come over and, and check him out. But all in all, you know, this was really good. They were definitely on their best behavior, Saint, because he was in a new place where he wasn't totally comfortable. And then Kevin, because he's been here before and he kind of knows the rules. So there's a little, little curiosity by Saint. Get him. Get, get him. Get him, Kevin. Get him, Kevin. Get him, Kevin. Get him, Kevin. All right, enough, hey, enough, enough. Walk in, dog has to fully settle. Dakota, no. Stepping on leash. Dog fully settles before you walk away or at least calms down immensely.
And then you leave the dog alone. They naturally get back into the play or they don't. I'm going to encourage it, though, just because I, I want him to engage again. Break. Yeah. Yeah, come here. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Good, good job, Dakota. Get him. Get him. Easy, Dakota. Scare Saint. <laughs> Dakota, easy. Dakota, easy. Good girl. <laughs> Good job, guys. Yeah, good job, Saint. Oh, kisses. All right, take a break. They're doing so good, though. But they need a break. For their lesson. <laughs> See, this triggers them. <laughs> hey, 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 Dakota, easy. Excuse me. Hey, hey, let's let's not be quite so into that. I know it's natural, but good job, Saint. Saint's like, are you okay? 